So today we are going to install Kali Linux. This is a step by step uh, guide that will help you make sure you install Kali Linux and make sure it's up and running in your system. So the first thing we are going to download the ISO from the official website. Sometimes it usually bring confusion because there's so much in the website that you actually wonder which one to kick. So we are going to do that right now. So after downloading the ISO file for Kali Linux, we are going to mount it into this USB drive. Make sure you go through the mounting process because that way you're going to avoid some of the errors that most people usually get when they are trying to install Kali Linux. You're going to avoid them during the mounting process. So make sure you go through the whole process. And also I'm going to put uh, timestamps in the video so that you can jump uh, to whatever topic that you're interested in. So without so much storage, you're going to go directly to our computer and uh, demonstrate exactly that. So this is the website and I'm going to put uh, this link in the description box so it will be easy for you. I'll just click on this bare metal. You select the architecture of your computer mine is a 64 bit so that's what i'm going to click so you click on download so it may take a while because it's a huge file so if you have internet download manager it should help uh, reduce the download time and again you must have fast internet so i'll cancel because i already have the os i downloaded this area alone and if i go to my downloads i have um, rufus which is what we are going to use for the mounting then I have Kali Linux and uh, we are good to go. I can now plug in my USB drive like that. Then open Rufus. Yes. And then I'll select the operating system. We have Kali Linux. Open. Yeah. And now we are almost set. So we have selected and make sure by the way all the time you select the device. I actually don't really need to go confirm that because I have only one USB drive attached to my laptop. So for you, if you have several, make sure at least you know the name of the USB drive. Otherwise you might mount to the wrong drive and end up deleting most of the data or all the data. Quick change of the partition scheme. If you have a GPT like mine, just do that. If uh, you, you are working with MBR, you hit on MBR. So I'll click on GPT and uh, nothing else here click on a start this is a very important step it's a uh, very important for you to write in dd image mode because during the installation process when uh, the setup is trying to access the resources required or the files required to start now the installation process you might get errors if you write in this first option to avoid that, just write it in a DD image mode. If for example, you want to make a live boot, it's recommended to actually work with the first option. It's totally okay, although it works also with the second method. So you click on okay. Yeah, warning the data will be deleted. Yeah, okay. So it will take a while also, depending on this, the speed of your machine and whatever you're mounting to if it's usb uh, 3 and above it will be easier and will be faster so you're going to give it some few minutes and uh, we'll be done with uh, the mounting so we are done and now we can restart and boot into usb drive and start the installation so we click on close right now we are done with mounting so the next thing will be now restarting and booting to USB drive and then proceeding from that point. So restart. Going to press on escape first before going to F9. So this is a habit I got after discovering that some uh, USB drives are slow. Uh, so pressing directly F9 might not give uh, the system enough time to read the USB drive. So I usually start with escape first and then I press on uh, F9 or I can just scroll all the way to boot menu, hit on enter, navigate to the second option which is where my USB drive is and then after hitting enter yeah, we have now this. Mm -hmm. So you have all these options, graphical install, which is what I usually recommend. So that's what you are going to, to use. 
So hitting enter, this is the screen that we get. Language, this is basic things, so you can just go through them fast. This is the point I was telling you that you should have the mounting in DD image uh, mode because it's now trying to access the installation files. And uh, if you started with the first option, it's not going to get all any of those files and you are going to get an error around here. So I click on yes, I hit on continue and it's very advisable to have Ethernet connected or just have internet around. So hit on continue, it's detecting the network hardware. So we are done. The host name, I want it to be Kali. Don't main name, I don't want that. I hit on enter just to continue. This is now the full name of the user. I just want to use that. Hit continue. The password, again, repeat the password. Hit on enter. Uh, your time zone, you can set whatever you want, whichever is close to you. It's now detecting the hard drives. So I want to use the entire disk. I have, I actually have Windows there, but I don't actually need it anymore. I want to install Kali Linux, hit on enter. And uh, yeah, exactly this is what I want to use. Hit on continue. But if you don't want to do that, let's try to go back. Always use manual so that you can be able to exactly pinpoint the partition you want to install your Kali Linux in. But because I just want to make a clean installation of Kali Linux, I don't need to actually do this. So I'll just go back and use the entire disk. The yeah, partitioning of the disk, I hit on continue. So I want to, you can use manual, which is recommended option. Or you can use the entire disk, use the largest continuous free space. If, for example, you decided to delete a partition which is large enough to accommodate Kali Linux, it will be automatically be selected. So I'm going to use the entire disk because I actually have Windows there, but I don't need that window. So I'll just click on continue. We are confirming this is the SSD that is inside there. This is the USB that I'm using to mount Windows 2. So I'll just select the hard drive, that's the SSD, hit on continue. We have several options. You can separate home partition so that it's in a different uh, partition. You can separate home var and uh, TMP partitions. But for the new user, click on uh, the first option. This is recommended for the first user. So you click on continue. Yeah, so everything is, as you can see here, we have swap, we have X4, and some free space there. And uh, you can undo the changes if you feel that whatever you're seeing here is not uh, sufficient for you. But because I'm comfortable, I can hit on uh, finish and hit on continue. So you'll have to accept that all these changes will be made to your drive. So hit on continue. And... Uh, the changes are now being written on the drive. So it's now installing the base system, which will take some, might take a while or some few minutes. So this is where you're going to select the desktop environment. I usually make sure I have GNOME selected. And the uh, rest yeah. We can still have the rest, but uh, this will depend on your preferences. I prefer GNOME. Hit on continue, and it will start retrieving and installing other softwares and everything that comes with it. So we are now installing the grab, and now we are finishing the installation. So we are done with the installation part, hit on continue and then we remove the USB drive and we are done with the installation. The only thing that we need to do is just to boot into now the normal operating system which is now Kali Linux. 
so this is the interface you can boot into Kali Linux no oh, so you have uh, this normal option of booting you have the advanced option for Kali Linux in case maybe you want to rescue your operating system maybe it has crashed and you want to maybe use the terminal uh, then you have the UFI from your settings if you want to go to the BIOS then you can use this option the third option so we load going to get the screen if you have more than one user they will list themselves here and now because I just only made one user I'll hit on enter and then the password that we, we used open up password or oh. and uh, we are in so that's the desktop but this is not the end of it all first make sure you're connected to the internet and then go to the terminal and then you type on uh, sudo apt get update hit on enter the password hit on enter it's working working for the headers now the next thing is uh, sudo apt get make sure there's uh, a dash between apt and get upgrade hit on enter uh, these are the files which it, it will download so it's asking whether it should go ahead you press on y then enter and you sit down and wait for it to complete the whole thing it will first download and then it will start unpacking and the installation will now proceed from there so we are now done installing Kali Linux and uh, if you have any question or something you can drop that in the comment region. So if you like this video you might also like a video where we are going to install both Kali Linux and Windows in the same PC that's a dual boot. So make sure you are subscribed and uh, hit the notification bell so that you get to be notified once I upload that video. So see you in the next one.